Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, uh, we can hear you. How are you doing? Okay. Fine, fine, thank you. Great, great. Befo, I would like to introduce you to uh, Professor Jair. Yes. Uh, Nancy. Yes, good morning, Nancy. Sandra. Yes, Sandra. Uh, do you remember Sandra? Yes, of course. <laughs> um, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Diana Soto. Professor Soto, okay. Befo Wahono. Befo Wahono. So, welcome our welcome to our seminar uh, about politics and education at the school. Uh, now we are waiting for more students, and uh, in a few minutes, uh, going to start. Um, first, five five minutes. Okay, no problem, yes, sir. Take your time. But by the way, uh, I cannot hear your voice clearly. I think it is too far. Uh, now? Okay. Yes, great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um... Um, Befo, um, I will share a uh, short introduction uh, and uh, your your profile uh, as researcher, and then um, your uh, academic talk. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Befo. De nada. <laughs> no, in that case is uh ah, okay, it's okay. Sama sama. <laughs> okay, sama sama. Hace dos días estábamos enseñando los francés. Muchas gracias y de nada en indonesio y en español. Sí, y 17 mil islas, algo así. No lo sé, le podemos preguntar. Befo. Um, how, how many people how many people live in Indonesia? Indonesia. Sorry? How many people live in Indonesia? Uh, do you mean the population of Indonesian? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, almost uh, 270 million people. Okay. Yes, 170 million people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, 100 or 200? 200. 200. 200. 275 millones, ¿no? <laughs> um, um, which is your island? Uh, right now, I am in the Java Islands, but uh, actually, I am from uh, Sumatra Island. Okay. Sumatra. Different island. Yeah. And then uh, in my presentation, I will show you Indonesian maps. <laughs> uh, the, the capital is Jakarta? Yeah, that's right. Jakarta. 
Ya acá. No, el sumatorio de me parece que es más abajo. ¿Are you near Sumatra? O sea, uh, ¿are you near um, Jakarta? Um, no, it's quite far, maybe about uh, 1,000 kilometers. More than 1,000 kilometers. Yes, quite far. Okay. But I, maybe, do you know Bali? No. But... Bali, Bali Island? <laughs> Just in movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if, if you know Bali Island, um, uh, right now I quit. Yeah, a little bit uh, near from Bali. Okay. Okay. Um, Befo, could, huh? could you could you share with us um, um, some aspect or character, characteristic of your uh, university, please? University of Jember. Yeah, of course. Um, university of Jember is a kind of public university, one of the biggest uh, public university in Indonesia, and then we have about seventeen uh, uh, faculty. Here and then about uh, more than 1,200 uh, academic staff, uh, and then uh, and then student body is about 40,000. Yeah, quite big university. And right now I am from a faculty of teacher training and educations. Okay. Sí, 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 sí. Y, en la, y en el Astra también. Sí. ¿Por qué Indonesia? Sí, sí. Ah, aunque... Ah, ah, what kind of government uh, uh, has Indonesia? Uh, republic? Yes, that's right. Republic. We are the republic uh, kind of uh, governments. Uh -huh. mm. uh, at this moment, we are knowing about uh, Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I will share to you all about Indonesia, all aspects of Indonesia. Aspect of Indonesia, yes. Okay, Befo. Um, two minutes, please. Okay, no problem. Take your time. El, el, su universidad tiene 40 mil estudiantes. 14 mil. 14 mil. Tienen 17 facultades. Sí. Así tiene 14 mil estudiantes. Y el número de profesores. No, no fue el mismo. Así que no sé si es decir. Hay una persona. Ah, pero no tengo el país no sé. Ok. Oh. Befo? Befo? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sir. Sorry. Uh, yep. um, before starting the, the lecture, your lecture, uh, can you 
uh, describe your faculty? How many programs or how many uh, students uh, has okay. your faculty? Uh, yeah, um, uh, my faculty is faculty of teacher training and education. So we are focused in uh, how to train uh, pre-service teacher to be a teacher in the next future. And then uh, in my faculty, we have about, um, as I remember, uh, 17 uh, department, 17 department. Uh, we have a uh, science department, I mean, uh, maybe just like uh, biology education, physics education, mathematic education, and etc. And also we have uh, some kind of uh, social science education, maybe history education, and then economic education, and etc. And also uh, regarding linguistic. Okay, so uh, the total is about 17 uh, department, including uh master and doctoral program in here uh, Jose, uh in here i also have some of my master and doctoral uh, students and also some college join with us today okay, okay. yeah uh, they are coming from um, master and and doctor of uh, science education mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Um, 17 departments, ciencias, eh, tecnología. Estudiantes de máster. Y el link Sí, está en su universidad, pero está como en un auditorio. Ah, no. ah ok. Okay. Bueno, eh, listo. Vamos a comenzar. Eh, hola. Eh, Bueno, buenos días para todos, para todas. Eh, muchas gracias por compartir con nosotros este momento que es muy significativo porque tenemos invitados eh, de un país lejano y grande, como hemos estado conociendo en este momento, eh, pero que además tiene una importancia global eh, que esperamos pueda reflejarse hoy en la conversación que vamos a tener con el profesor Bejo, Bejo Guajono. Eh, tuve la posibilidad de, de compartir con, con Bejo un semestre en, el, en la National Taiwan Normal University, donde Bejo eh, obtuvo su doctorado. Eh, y luego de eso hemos estado en contacto en distintas instancias. Bejo es eh, eh, un investigador interdisciplinario muy... Eh, de, de, con un trabajo muy interesante eh, y la invitación que le hicimos eh, para que estuviera con nosotros el día de hoy eh, representaba un desafío para él porque no es sobre una conferencia sobre biología o sobre STEM o sobre ciencias naturales sino que es una conversación sobre el Sistema Nacional de Educación en Indonesia además de eh, 
las características que este puede eh, ofrecernos como comparación, como referencia para también conocer eh, el Sistema Nacional de Educación de Colombia y de Latinoamérica. Eh, el profesor Befo Guajono es doctor en, en educación científica, es profesor asistente de la Facultad de Formación de Profesores y Educación de la Universidad de Jember, Indonesia, eh, es doctor en educación científica como el Science Education Center de Taiwán, Máster en Educación en, área, en el área de Biología y Licenciado en Biología por la Universidad de Benkulu. Eh, recibió distinción de excelencia en su tesis doctoral por parte de la NTNU porque eh, Befo hizo un doctorado de cinco años en tres. Entonces, eh, de, se destacó no solo digamos, por la calidad de su trabajo, sino también por, eh, por la... Eh, la, cons la consistencia y la disciplina con la que enfrentó su investigación. Eh, sus áreas de trabajo son educación en STEM, Science, eh, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics, eh, formación y evaluación del desarrollo profesional de profesores, que es uno de los temas que le, le sugerí que pudiera tratar con nosotros hoy, y... Eh, es miembro del Comité Editorial de la revista Asia-Pacífico de Investigación en Gestión Educativa y cuenta con varias publicaciones indexadas en Scopus y en otras bases de datos. Eh, aquí preparamos, eh, Befo preparó un abstract de su conferencia y yo también preparé un abstract eh, sobre eh, por qué eh, esta invitación, por qué este, eh, este, este tema que hoy reúne al Seminario de Políticas y Reformas Educativas y al Seminario de Reformas Universitarias Latinoamérica. Eh, Indonesia es importante por varias razones hoy. En la introducción ustedes van a encontrar dos datos. El primero es que en el ranking eh, del panorama general de los eh, Objetivos de Desarrollo Sostenible, eh, eh, en, lo, en el primer cuartil, es decir, dentro de las primeras 25 universidades, hay ocho universidades asiáticas y una de ellas es, in, es, es de Indonesia. Por lo tanto, la presencia de Indonesia en el área del, 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 de, que hoy se conoce como lo Indo-Pacífico eh, es relevante, no, no solo por la magnitud de su sistema de educación, eh, sino también por... Eh, la posición estratégica que tiene eh, Indonesia en un lugar, en un espacio donde hoy muchas de las tensiones globales eh, se están resolviendo, donde está la situación de Taiwán, la situación de, de China, de Hong Kong, de Vietnam, es decir, es un área que eh, nos podría indicar eh, ciertas transformaciones de los sistemas nacionales de educación y de la educación superior en particular, muy vinculadas a las dinámicas geopolíticas por una parte, y también a los, a, a los propios eh, cambios políticos eh, de los sistemas eh, nacionales de educación. En ese sentido, tenemos la posibilidad hoy de, eh, de compartir con, eh, con alguien que está investigando sobre el desarrollo profesional docente, viendo los cambios eh, que la globalización, las tecnologías y, y, lo, y toda la época post-COVID están produciendo y que eh, ya se está haciendo amigo de nuestro doctorado, y esperamos que pronto pueda participar en más actividades. Eh, voy a leer rápidamente la introducción para que Befo eh, pueda eh, contextualizarse y también sus estudiantes. Eh, Befo. Um, I will read an introduction. Um, can you hear me? Yes, uh, Jose, I can hear you, but uh, I'm so sorry, a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. Ok. Um, <clears throat> ¿Por qué Indonesia? ¿Cuáles son nuestras razones para investigar o conocer sobre el Sistema Nacional de Educación indonesio? Eh, ¿existe alguna, ¿Existen eh, características específicas en este sistema de educación que eh, arrojen luces eh, sobre la relación entre política y reforma educativa en el eh, actual proceso de globalización? Para responder, compartimos dos datos. Primero, de acuerdo al ranking Times Higher Education, de los eh, eh, Objetivos de Desarrollo Sostenible, ocho universidades asiáticas están rankeadas dentro del primer cuartil 
y una de ellas es de Indonesia. Segundo, la, el enfoque de educación comparada nos sugiere eh, o sugiere diversificar nuestros puntos de comparación para investigar sobre los, los cambios educacionales contemporáneos. Eh, el aprendizaje comparativo es también un estilo cosmopolita que nos permite construir comunidades científicas y redes en ciencias de la educación. Creo que la, la intervención del profesor Befo hoy es una gran oportunidad para iniciar nuestros diálogos. Why Befo? Why Indonesia? Yep. Why Indonesia? Which are our reasons to inquire about the Indonesian national education system? Are there any specific characteristics in this education system that shed light on the relationship between politics and education reform within the current globalization process? To, to answer, we share two pieces of information. First, according to the Times Higher Education overall ranking of Sustainable Development Goals 2022, eight Asian universities are ranked within the first quartile and one of them is from Indonesia, ranked uh, 18. Second, comparative education approach suggests diversifying or points of comparison to research on contemporary educational changes. Comparative learning is also a cosmopolitan style that allows building scientific communities and network in education science. I believe that Professor Befo Wajonos academic talk is a great opportunity to start our dialogue. Befo, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, Jose, for the nice introductions uh, by Spanish. Uh, Muchas gracias. Okay, and then um, everyone, I will start my my presentations. Uh, okay, so Jose, can you see my slide? Yes, 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 we can. Okay, thank you. So. <clears throat> Uh, everyone, good morning. Good morning, dear uh, Colombia. In some countries uh, around Colombia, and then good uh, evening uh, for my students and my friends from Indonesia. Uh, my talk in this morning and also in this evening is about education and curriculum reform in Indonesia. Uh, but I will focus in the rule of politics and culture. Um. As uh, introduction by uh, Jose, uh, that my name is Befo Wahono. Uh, I am from uh, Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, University of Jember, Indonesia. Uh, especially, I am from Biology Education Programs or Department. And then, <clears throat> uh, this is some highlight uh, for my talk. Uh, I will talk about maybe 40 minutes till uh, one hour. Uh, I will highlight about the, the first one, the position of Indonesia in the Asia Pacific context. And then the second one uh, about Indonesia data demographics. Uh, the, the next one um, regarding Indonesian educational system. So I will introduce uh, to you uh, about the Indonesia educational systems. Uh, the next one about a curriculum reform because uh, we just uh, have uh, the new uh, Uh, curriculum or educational system in Indonesia. Uh, the, the last one or the next one, um, uh, the impact of the reform, the curriculum reform on the teacher professional development, especially for um, science education teacher. So uh, five, uh, five items I will share to you about uh, 20, uh, 40 minutes till uh, one hour. First ones, uh, the position of Indonesia in the Asia-Pacific context. This is our globe. Uh, Indonesia is here. And then this is Asia-Pacific. You can see from Rus Russia to Australia, this is Asia-Pacific uh, regions. Where's Indonesia? This is Indonesia. This is Sumatra Islands, as I mentioned to you. And then this is... Um, Uh, Java Islands. This is Borneo or Kalimantan, and uh, many others, uh, many others uh, island in Indonesia. And um, this is you right now, Colombia, and we have uh, quite far away 
I think it's about we have different time. Uh, Indonesia uh, 12 hours ahead than you. So uh, right now we are in Indonesia about 9 uh, p.m. and in uh, Colombia you are right now it's about 9 uh, e.m. So uh, 12 hours ahead from uh, Colombia. So uh, this is some quotes uh, that uh, how to highlight uh, Asia Pacific region. That's the unique features of development of science teacher education, particularly in each Asia countries in relation to the historical background and also national economic development. And the last one, of course, the national political system. Uh, in, this, in this talk, I will focus in the uh, national political system and also some uh, little bit, uh, some uh, cultural background for each of uh, Asia country. Okay, so uh, uh, hello, Jose, can you hear me? Okay, I will stop a little bit. Also, can you hear me? Perfect. Perfect. Uh, we missed the connection. Uh, okay, okay. In, in, in the outline. <laughs> in the outline. Okay. Okay, so I will uh, a little bit. Asian uh, Pacific context. Okay. Sorry. Yes, okay, no problem. This one? Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, this one, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Hassan. So the first one I will share to you about how the Indonesia in the Asia Pacific context. The first one, um, this is the maps of the globe. Okay, and then I you, you can see this is the green one this is Asia Pacific from Russia till uh, Australia. So where's Indonesia? Here's Indonesia in the middle. And then uh, you know that uh, we are in the uh, in between uh, Indian Ocean and also Pacific Oceans. And also we are in between uh, Asia continent and also Australia continent. So this is Indonesia, very beautiful country. And uh, you are here in Colombia. Uh, we have uh, about uh, 12 hours difference, right? Uh, Indonesia, uh, 12 hours ahead than you. So right now we are in Indonesia about 9 p.m. And in uh, Colombia uh, or America Latin is about uh, 9 p.m. So 12 hours ahead from you. And then this is some quotes uh, in terms of my, my talk, that the unique features of development of science teacher, especially education in Asia country, uh, is quite relation to the historical backgrounds, of course, and also national economic development, and of course, the national political system. But in this talk, uh, I will uh, highlight some, some uh, 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 some focus in the political system and the culture. Then, uh, start from now, maybe I will show uh, some characteristic of Asia countries first. Then uh, the next one, the next focus, we will uh, move to Indonesian one. So uh, from Korea and Thailand, where is Korea and Thailand? This is uh, Korea, South Korea, and then this is Thailand. Uh, what is the characteristic of uh, Korea and Thailand. Uh, in the Korea and Thailand, in terms of relationships between individual and groups, they had a high emotional intimacy, particularly in their science classroom. It means they like or they prefer to be a cooperative activities, to do a cooperative activities in the classroom. Uh, maybe quite uh, 
different with Western country that they uh, attempt to uh, do a solely or uh, some kind of uh, uh, individual work. But in Korea and Thailand, uh, they like to do a cooperative activity. How, oh, sir? Um, you lost your connection, is it right? No, no. No, no, it's okay. Okay, oh, okay. So, because I cannot see <laughs> your picture. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, no. okay, sorry. We and I will sorry. continue. Yep. <laughs> Just tell me if you lost connection. Uh, and then the next one, uh, characteristic of Korea and Thailand uh, about the equity, about the gender. Almost all students in the two countries perceive that they had equal participation, participation and opportunity in their activity in the classroom. So equal participation. But the unique one is uh, in the Korea, uh, they have a fairly and equal competency regarding gender. But uh, particularly in uh, uh, Thailand, a uh, little bit a slightly different. Uh, in the Thailand, rest the boy or girl significant difference from each other. What about about the the boy have more teacher support and more opportunity to participate in inquiry activity? However, for Thai girls are more encouraged in terms of collaboration and tax concentration. So a little bit uh, slightly difference uh, a focus in the Thailand uh, regarding the fairly or the the participant in the science classroom. And then the second uh, country, Japan. Uh, where's Japan? This is Japan uh, in the Pacific area. Japanese teachers have higher than average participant rates in terms of professional development. So it's mean, uh, it's mean teacher in Japan, they would like to observe and uh, visit other school. They like learn from others. This is a uh, culture, culture in the Japan, culture in the teacher in the Japan. So uh, here they mentioned that Japan professional culture. Even for expert, they also like learn from others, from the expert, not only from the teacher. So this is the, the, the culture in Japan. And, uh, and they mentioned that uh, they should not ignore science teacher wisdom and expertise. It means they really like uh, teacher wisdom and expertise. And uh, the teacher also saw enthusiasm and reflective practice as their professional culture in the world in their uh, Japan country. So uh, in terms of teacher professional development, um, they uh, would like to continue reform for teacher education based on reflection of research results and also teacher voices. So it means that teachers uh, in the Japan uh, really, really uh, have a powerful uh, voice because that is the professional culture in Japan. The next one, Malaysia. Where is Malaysia? It's quite near from Indonesia. This is Malaysia and also this part also uh, Malaysia. And then this is Indonesia. What is characteristic of Malaysia? Education in Malaysia is ongoing effort toward for the developing potential of individual in holistic and integrated manner. So they want to move from individual to holistic and integrated manner. And uh, so far, they would like to produce individuals who are intellectual, spiritually, and emotionally. And I also highlight this one uh, because this is from uh, their national philosophy. They believe uh, in a God, the vision of God. So this is a quite a strong uh, uniqueness from the Malaysia. They would like to produce individual that intellectual, spiritual, and emotional. Then they really believe in God. Uh, 
also uh, uh, from the sign teachers and science contents uh, they include ethic moral values and also foster uni unity among the students uh, it's mean in their curriculum uh, they really consider about the ethic and moral of the students and the next one uh, as another countries uh, in the Southeast Asia, uh, they want to move uh, from the uh, uh, from the one 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 approach of education into the STEM education approach. So they have a uh, they have a uh, agenda, national agenda to use STEM education as a whole uh, educational system in their country. Okay, so this is Malaysia. Now, uh, Taiwan. Okay, so where is Taiwan? This small country in uh, Asia Pacific region, Taiwan. But uh, the power. This is the powerful country in uh, in the East, in the East Asia. We know that science teacher education embraces the East and West as well as both tradition and modern society. So, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, it means uh, they embrace uh, Western and Eastern culture. This is Taiwan. So uh, Taiwan is democratic countries, and they have uh, preserved uh, traditions and also modernization for their country. So this is Taiwan, and then uh, the highlight, another highlight of Taiwan is. They was uh, number four, the best in the PISA program for uh, international uh, science uh, assessment. Uh, but it is uh, 2015, number four, the best number four in, uh, in, in the world. And then number one, in terms of uh, international level in the uh, science education journal. So this is Taiwan, a very strong country. In terms of curriculum, uh, they just uh, they just uh, move from the curriculum standards, and then they change the curriculum guidelines. What is the impact of uh, these changes? Is uh, we know that curriculum standard and curriculum guidelines. Curriculum guideline is uh, uh, some kind of uh, more freely. It means uh, give teachers more teaching autonomy because just a guideline guideline not the standard this is guideline so the teacher can do what they want to do in the classroom and then uh, this allow the teacher to apply an just exemplary rule for the rule model in education <laughs> hmm. and then one one famous saying uh, from taiwan uh, they mentioned that good teachers rejuvenate the country it means uh, uh, because uh, with the good teachers, they will uh, teach the young students or the young people to be a uh, hero in the next future of the country. So uh, the importance of teacher in the time. And also a dimension about the philosophy uh, people thinking in Taiwan they mentioned that uh, the teacher well respected in the Taiwan well respected in highly respectable profession in Taiwan this is the teacher in Taiwanese they call it uh, Lausa. Lausa is mean teacher or professor <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is PISA, PISA result 2018. Uh, uh, I would like to highlight some uh, Asia Pacific uh, countries here. For example, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Brunei Darussalam, and Malaysia. Some of uh, East Asia 
country, uh, they just below average of the other country, below of average. But for some other country in uh, Asia Pacific region, for example, China, Singapore, Macau, Hong Kong, and then uh, Korea, uh, Japan, and also Taiwan, China, Taipei. They are in the top 10 uh, number of PISA results. So a little bit slightly different between uh, Eastern uh, East Asia and then Southeast Asia. And where is Colombia? Colombia, quite the same with the, uh, uh, some other country in the Southeast Asia. Uh, okay, below, below the average of the PISA results. And then I will share it to you about Indonesian data demographic. So also this is uh, the map of Indonesia. We have, uh, as I mentioned in my abstract, we have more than 17,000 island. 17,000 island, more than 17,000 island. So many islands. It means we have so many cultures, so many ethnic, and so many languages. For the languages, we have uh, more than uh, 700 languages. But uh, in terms of languages, we have uh, 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 one, one, uh, one the big language, it means Indonesia language. So this unites Indonesia the whole. It means uh, Indonesia language we can understand uh, uh, from uh, maybe you are from Java Island, maybe you are from Kalimantan Island, you are from Java Island, you are from Papua Island. We can understand uh, Indonesia language. This is in the unity of the language of Indonesia. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, this is the Java Island and this is Jakarta here. Uh, the green one is Jakarta. This is capital city of Indonesia. And uh, University of Jember, I think here, okay. Uh, yes, here. Uh, Eastern part of Java Islands. And I am coming from uh, Sumatra Island, a little bit far away, about 2,000 kilometers from uh, uh, that I work right now in, uh, uh, in the uh, University of Jember. And then we have a, a kind of motto in Indonesia. Even though we difference each other, but unity in the fires, uh, diversity. So this is our motto of Indonesia, unity in diversity. We have so many islands, we have so many uh, religion, we have so many languages, we have so many cultures, but we are united. <laughs> okay, so in... This is uh, demographic data from Indonesia. Uh, also asked to me before, uh, in the beginning of the talk, uh, how many of uh, Indonesian people? This are uh, more than uh, 170 million people in Indonesia. And then uh, from uh, those of people, we divided into some groups. Uh, for example, baby boomers uh, age, Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, and then post Gen Z. So uh, what is the biggest one? The biggest one is the millennial, Gen Z, and post Gen Z. It's more than uh, 50% or almost uh, 60% of the total number in Indonesia. So this is data demographic. And you know that uh, Indonesia is the fourth most populous country in the world after China, India, USA, and number four is Indonesia. And uh, it's diverse students' populations, including over 300 ethnic groups. And you know that each with their own unique culture tradition, and languages. Okay, so this is Indonesia, very big country and very beautiful country. Please welcome to Indonesia, also in France, Professor. 
<laughs> okay. <clears throat> and then in terms of uh, level of education, we have uh, some kind of uh, public education and private education. Uh, in the primary school, elementary school, in total, we have more than 1,047 uh, primary school. In terms of junior high school, uh, more than 3,000 and, uh, sorry, uh, 3,006, 3, uh, more than, sorry, more than 30,000 junior uh, secondary school. And uh, for senior high school, more than 12,000. And then for senior vocational uh, high school, more than uh, 12,000. And the total number is more than 200,000 uh, school in Indonesia. This data coming is uh, coming from 2015. And then right now, uh, after eight, uh, eight years, uh, I think uh, uh, the total number is uh, uh, increased so much. Uh, by the way, uh, Indonesia have colonized with six countries uh, in the beginning. You know, uh, maybe just like Colombia, uh, Portuguese or Portugal, and also Spain, Spaniel, and Holland, and also France, and England, and Japan. Why is it happen? Because maybe because Indonesia is a beautiful country and very, uh, very, very uh, uh, plentiful uh, resources in Indonesia. So every country would like to come to Indonesia. Yeah, in the, uh, in the past. And uh, the next one I will introduce to you about the Indo Indonesian educational system. Okay, so uh, this is the highlight of uh, a twelve educational system in Indonesia. We have a kind of kindergartens, and elementary school, junior school, and senior school. Uh, the age uh, range to five to six, and uh, seven to twelve, uh, fourteen to fifteen, uh, sixteen to eighteen. And uh, you know that uh, for the the uh, school year uh, for the kindergarten about two years. And then elementary school, we have a uh, six level, uh, the grade one to grade six, it means six years. And then for junior uh, junior school, uh, we have, we have uh, also uh, three grades. Uh, 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 it's also about three years. And for senior uh, high school, we also have uh, three grades. So it's also the same uh, three years. And you know that's, uh, in our educational system, we have some kind of uh, two different things. Uh, the first one, uh, general schools, and the second one, Islamic school. Uh, Islamic is a religion, uh, so religion school and also general school. Also in the elementary school and junior high school and also senior high school, we have some kind of uh, uh, two different things. And then you, net, you, you know that uh, also the control of education in Indonesia there are two ministries, two ministries, this, uh, they oversee uh, the education. The first one, Ministry of Education, uh, Research and Technology, and the second one, of course, Ministry of Religion. <coughs> so this is the uniqueness of Indonesian uh, educational system. And for the tertiary uh, education system, uh, we have the same with you uh, in Colombia, I think, uh, undergraduates, graduate and postgraduates. For the undergraduates, it's about four years, a graduate two years in average, and also postgraduate uh, three years uh, on average. Uh, in the undergraduate, uh, we have two different things. The first one, academic education programs, and, and the, second, the second one, vocational, vocational education program. And from graduates, uh, 
uh, quite different. Uh, academic education and a professional education specialist can apply master programs. And also for the postgraduate or for doctoral degree, academic one and apply doctor program one. So uh, this is the differences or the, unique, the uniqueness of Indonesian educational system. Uh, this is the picture about the public and private university in Indonesia. So you can see that uh, number, the total number of private university is uh, so much different with the public university. The private university, um, almost 4,000 uh, university. And then, but uh, for the public university, including University of Jember, there is only uh, 176 uh, public universities, including University of Jember. So uh, there is uh, so much differences between private and public university. Okay, uh, this is uh, the same one educational system uh, in Indonesia. Uh, you can see here uh, there are three ways. There are two ways. The first one, uh, general way, and the second one, Islamic way. Because we have uh, two ministries here, two ministries that uh, oversee the, the education. Uh, kindergarten, Islamic kindergarten, primary, Islamic primary, till the <coughs> Uh, senior high school and until the uh, uh, tertiary education or uh, undergraduate postgraduate education we also have islamic higher education here so we have a uh, two way uh, difference of education and uh, for the non formal way this is the formal ones and then this is a non formal one we have uh, a kind of uh, uh, from the from the first one uh, from the, the beginning daycare center play group packet A packet B packet C apprenticeship and etc. So this is uh, the non formal way to get education in Indonesia, and of course from informal <coughs> we have some <laughs> courses in family education. Okay, so this is the slide uh, for, uh, more focused to the teacher selection, how to be a te teacher in, in, in Indonesia. So in the beginning, teacher candidates, they apply uh, to get a position in the education institutions, I mean university, uh, by some kind of uh, selection here. This is some kind of selections. So after they uh, get a position in the university, they will get a four-year pre-service teacher program here. And also, uh, this is public one, and um, maybe some of they uh, will uh, uh, try to uh, get a position in private teacher education institution. Because we also have some uh, so many uh, private uh, uh, university in terms of teacher education. Uh, the same, they will have a uh, four years. And after the graduates, they will have a bachelor degree. And after that, uh, to be a teacher, they have to um, some kind of selection. There are some kind of selection. The first one, selection by schools. So it means schools, maybe private school, some kind of private school, uh, they will hire the teacher directly. Or they can... Uh, 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 join selection by the district authority. It's mean contract teachers. Maybe uh, in the public school or in private school. And the last one, in the most popular ones, they would like to join the national test to be a civil servant teachers. See, this is the, the very uh, famous one and very popular one. They would like to go this one. Okay, in terms of uh, education qualification uh, framework, we, we, we have some kind of this uh, uh, education qualification framework of Indonesia. 
uh, this is the 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 the, the degree uh, from bachelor degree, master degree, doctoral degree, uh, and then the senior high school. Uh, this is uh, the level. And uh, what is this? This is the uh, we, we call a qualification framework, or in Indonesia we call it KKNI. Uh, is a competency qualification ranking framework. It means if <coughs> someone uh, uh, just graduate from bachelor degree, they have uh, they have a competency just like this. If they just graduate from master program, they have should be have a competency just like this. This this is the framework, and you know that this is a framework can match, equalize, and integrate that education and job training fields, and also work experiences, and then they can recognize work competency following the structures of these values. So this is the framework of education. Now we move to the curriculum reforms in Indonesia. So uh, this is the highlight of curriculum reform in Indonesia. Uh, you know that uh, we have so many times uh, uh, do uh, did a curriculum reform. Uh, as I remember, maybe about 10 or uh, 11 times since uh, uh, 47, after the independent days of Indonesia. So this is the highlight. Um, from uh, the, 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 the first one, 47 till 75, uh, this is just uh, the, the curriculum uh, the teacher just follow the instruction from the government, the, the center way, the center way. They just follow the instruction from the government. And then uh, start uh, from the 84 uh, till now, they tend to focus to give a freely to the teachers. But of course, uh, each, the, the, each the reform, they have the uniqueness. Uh, for example, uh, in the... Uh, 84 and 74, they tend to uh, do just like um, uh, competency-based curriculum. Still, uh, 20, uh, 2004, competency-based curriculum. Uh, 74, it uh, was tend to uh, um, uh, subject-based curriculum, subject-based curriculum. And then uh, 2006, uh, uh, the government uh, changed uh, the focus to the unit level of education curriculum. So they, 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 they gave uh, freely to the, or authority to the school to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to decide what kind of learning, what kind of anything regarding the curriculum that what they want to do. So they give a authority to the school, uh, unit a level of educational, to, to choose. And then uh, the next one, the 20,000 and, and a certain curriculum. This is uh, quite the same with the previous one, uh, tend to more to competency. Uh, we, in, in this uh, particular uh, curriculum, we uh, 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 really, really famous uh, term, uh, for example, basic competency, main competency, and uh, etc. And you know, uh, just just uh, last year ago, um, 2022, we have the new uh, curriculum. We call it Merdeka curriculum. What is Merdeka curriculum? I, I will uh, share to you uh, later. So uh, we changed to the new one, but uh, uh, we do it, uh, we do the, the curriculum reform gradually. Gradually, so uh, 2022 we just launched. 2023 uh, we uh, try uh, to uh, train uh, the teacher to do it uh, to do the the curriculum. 2024, uh, our target is uh, about 50 percent 
of the Indonesian school uh, will implement this curriculum and etc. So we do it uh, gradually. Because uh, so, uh, as I mentioned before that Indonesia is so big country and then it's a uh, little bit difficult to organize uh, whole the country. So this is the uh, curriculum uh, Merdeka or Merdeka curriculum. Uh, Indonesian government uh, took the initiative to revise or change the curriculum from 20,013 curriculum, and then we changed to curriculum Merdeka. In English, we uh, maybe uh, uh, independent learning curriculum, independent learning curriculum. So uh, uh, this uh, focus uh, or this approach, uh, student could be more flexible with each learning interest. So this is why we, we call it independent learning curriculum or Merdeka curriculum. And the student uh, more flexible with each learning interest. And then the focus here is uh, the essential things or essential matter. For example, reading literacy, reading, reading literacy. This is uh, just one example. And then uh, the student can choose any subject they want to study according to their talents and interests, especially for senior high school. Okay, and then um, um, not only for student, but the teacher also free to develop their existing potential. And uh, the, the, the teacher also free to choose or to select which a topic that uh, they can do uh, the first one, the second one, the third one, and etc. So quite the same, a uh, little bit the same with the, the maybe uh, with the uh, Taiwan that I mentioned before. Uh, they they get they, they just give uh, uh, guidelines, and then the the, the teacher. Uh, uh, can choose and can select which one uh, the best for them. It means uh, independent me means uh, more uh, freely. This is curriculum Merdeka, the, the new one. So this is a uh, Ministry of Education that initiative the, the uh, he initiate uh, initiative of uh, Merdeka Belajar. Uh, his name is Nadim Makarim, our uh, ministry. Uh, uh, there are four, uh, the big one. Uh, the first one, he replaced national standard school examinations. And then he removed national examination. So we don't have, uh, we don't have longer uh, national examination, especially for senior and junior high school. And then uh, he proposed one set of lesson plan. And also uh, because before we have a uh, zona C, uh, zonation system in terms of school. So uh, the student, uh, for or for example, uh, for elementary school or junior school, they enroll based on their zonation, based on their uh, their address or their area. So in this uh, initiative, uh, the new the, the reform, uh, uh, Nedim Makarim or the ministry, a uh, little bit loosen the zonation system. It means uh, the student can a uh, little bit freely, little bit freely to choose uh, the school. Uh, little bits, uh, the same with the previous one. The previous one uh, tend to focus to uh, uh, basic, basic uh, school or uh, maybe, I mean, uh, from elementary school to the senior high school. But uh, the new policy is about a program uh, Merdeka Belajar is meant freedom for learning. This program, especially uh, for uh, undergraduate programs, for undergraduate program, freedom learning. This is the program. But the program is the form of an autonomous granting of freedom to the campus, to the university. It means uh, it's free from complicated bureaucracies. And the student freedom to choose the programs. Uh, particularly, they give freedom to study outside of the department, outside of the university, to other university or to other uh, department. So a little bit of, of freely. 
and you know that this policy aim is to encourage students to master a variety of useful knowledge and skill because uh, this is uh, why uh, the Nadi import our, our ministry uh, uh, proposed this one because maybe uh, in fact, I, I will tell you later uh, he his characteristic Lip. sorry sorry Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, so, variety uh, useful of knowledge. This is a little bit uh, uh, has a relationship with the characteristic of the uh, our ministry. So, little bit uh, uh, we have some uh, characteristic of the ministry, and then it's influenced by political issue. So, I will tell you later about this one. And then uh, Merdeka Belajar or uh, uh, Freedom for Learning is uh, it, it means uh, it's initiated by the governments. And then this is the same direction of the goal is John Dewey. Maybe uh, if you are from uh, education, you know uh, well uh, who is John Dewey, uh, progressive concept. Uh, John Dewey mentioned that about the stream that offers the freedom and flexibility to educational institutions uh, to explore student potential. So we adopt, our government adopt uh, this, uh, this, uh, this thinking, this approach. So uh, Merdeka Belajar or uh, independent curriculum or free curriculum is focused on deeper learning in more real community environments. And then I will move to the next issue. It is about political issue in educational reform. Uh, you know this, uh, this uh, pendulum, uh, maybe the ball uh, tied to the rope, and then it, it will be swings, depend on the force. So uh, this is uh, just like a political issue in uh, education, you know, uh, that uh, most educator and many observers know that uh, that's uh, this, this issue. Uh, Pendulum swings quite often in educations, and then the profiling political movement tend to influence the reform of the times. It means uh, educations we cannot spare it between education and political issue. It it's happened in Indonesia also, and also I think it's also happened in your country. So, uh, for example, this way. Uh, in Indonesia, political issue is a high significance uh, influence in our curriculum. Uh, why? Because curriculum is highly a political process. Sometimes uh, change the regimes, change the uh, presidents, change the ministry, it will be changed the curriculum. Almost. Right? Because uh, you know that uh, from the political party, the first one political party. This is political, the political one. Okay, how's the missing connection? Okay, okay, sorry, we will wait for you. Connection is okay. So uh, we are waiting for the Columbia teams because they text to me they lost connection. Hi, welcome back, Hosa. So everything okay? Uh, I cannot hear your voice, Jose. 
Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. Um, so, so I will continue. Open the room. Okay. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Okay, so this is the pendulum. Uh, uh, just, just like the, this pendulum, that education also influenced by political movement. It's happened in the Indonesia, and I think also happened here in uh, your country, Colombia. Then, uh, uh, why? Because uh, you know that uh, in Indonesia, particularly, uh, political issue has a significant role. Because a curriculum reform happened, and then it is highly political process. Why? Because you know that uh, from the beginning, a political party, political party, and then political party, uh, they send a representative to be a legislative assembly, and also uh, to be a president. This is political from the political party, and the president will choose or select a ministry. All the thing is a political issue, political process. And then uh, from the ministry, from this one, of course, the ministry uh, has a characteristic. And of course, the ministry uh, can be forced from uh, by president, can be forced by a political party. What they want uh, to do, what the perspective of education, and then this can be... Uh, uh, happen in the ministry. And here, all the things in educational system can be happen, including uh, everything uh, in the curriculum. So it's mean, uh, why I mentioned that political issue, political uh, 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 political issue in Indonesia is so, so significant or so strong, because just like this uh, framework. Okay, uh, why the political issue re really has a strong influence to education? First, because this is my, my, my personal uh, perspective. This is my personal perspective. Uh, because Indonesia has not a long period blueprint for national educational agenda. So it means uh, if they change the political regimes, they will change uh, educational agenda, national educational agenda, because we don't have a long period blueprints for this education. And then uh, you know that the, the uh, barometer uh, of the national education depends on the person in the Ministry of Education. Of course, because the Ministry of Education can uh, can issue the new rule, the new curriculum, or the new uh, policy in terms of education, based on uh, his personal interest, maybe, or based on uh, the uh, by force from the president or by force from the uh, 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 political party. And you know that each Ministry of Education has a special mindset. And it will be different each other. Okay, so for example, uh, this one, uh, this is highlight mindset of my, our ministry. Uh, I just highlight three uh, different ministry of education in the in the uh, in the in the past and also right now. So uh, the first one, this is. Uh, 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 one of the Ministry of Education. Uh, he is professor. He is scientist. And what is uh, what is the focus of this ministry in our educational system? The uh, uh, the focus is tend to scientific approach. So everything about scientific approach. Like why? Because he is scientist. He is a professor. The second one, uh, this is all our also uh, our minister, our uh, former minister of education. He's academicians. He's also professor, but uh, professor of education. 
this is the scientist and also professor. Uh, this one, uh, this professor or this this ministry, uh, he tend to uh, give a zonation system. Zonation system, and then the zonation system changed by this uh, minister uh, later. Why the zonation system? Because in in terms of uh, educational theory, because he is professor of education, so uh, uh, he have a strong background of uh, educational theory. For example, uh, if the student uh, 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 in the education we have uh, we have some kind of uh, equal equal uh, equal how to say uh, equal opportunity to get a, a school or position in the enrollment. So uh, in this in this era, uh, every student should enroll the school based on their area. So this is some kind of uh, educational theory. And then the next one, the new one, the new uh, ministry, uh, he is not a professor. He is not get a doctoral degree, no. He's master degree. But he is international businessman. International businessman. And then he... He has a lot of experience in outside of the country, in Singapore, in other country. Uh, so this is the uniqueness of the uh, our president Jokowi. Uh, he is a uh, very diligent. I mean, uh, he is very clever, clever to select a uh, ministry of education. Uh, in the past previous one. Uh, all of the uh, all of the ministry of education are coming from were coming from a professor but the new one is international businessman uh by the way Hossa, can you hear me colombia is it clear my voice yes yes uh, okay okay thank you i i just check it Okay, so uh, because he is an international businessman, uh, they uh, he has a special uniqueness in terms of uh, in terms of a policy. Uh, first one in the curriculum, the new curriculum uh, we we uh, as I mentioned before the freedom learning, freedom learning, and then he tend to experience and technological base. Because you know, based our demographic data, uh, almost sixty percent of our total population is uh, millennials and Gen Z and Gen Z. It means uh, they, uh, how to say, uh, uh, get much. Sorry, uh, they ha uh, have uh, much exposure to educational technology so that's why in this curriculum new curriculum uh, he tend to focus on experience uh, and technological base and also uh, this ministry or not the ministry or uh, uh, the new one uh, he thinks that the indonesian is just the characteristic of indonesian people is a uh, generalist Indonesian people can do everything. This is the characteristic of Indonesia. Maybe quite different with other country. They, 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 they tend to specialize. They don't want to do what they don't specialize. I mean, if they don't, don't have a skill for this one, they, want, uh, they, 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 they don't want to do it. But in Indonesia, they can do everything even though they don't have uh, any skill for that. So our government, uh, my, the ministry, uh, see this opportunity. And then uh, because that's, uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, in this issue, for example, in the undergraduate program, uh, he gave uh, opportunity the students to go other university to go other departments. Maybe, for example, if I I, I am a biology uh, education department, I can uh, enroll for the next semester to another department. 
maybe or uh, or in the in the uh, agriculture or maybe in the uh, languages or maybe uh, etc. So because uh, our ministry see uh, this opportunity. Okay, another uh, another topic about the political is, uh, for example, uh, the shaping curriculum reform. Uh, I just I like two two things. For example, up after the Soharto, Soharto is uh, authoritarian regimes. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, the second second president of Indonesia, and after uh, this regime fall down. Uh, uh, there was a push to reform educational system to promote democracy and human rights. Why? Because the, the previous one is authoritarian regime. And after that, uh, the, the, the government wants to have a democracy uh, regime, not the authoritarian regime. Okay. And then in this particular issue, they has uh, they had a new subjects. For example, civic education, human rights, multiculturalism, and other etc. So, uh, I mean, uh, this political issue influence the the content of the curriculum in the school. And then the last one, uh, just uh, just uh, I mean, uh, uh, in the curriculum merdeka, the last one, the last curriculum, the government. Uh, more emphasize the importance of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics educations because uh, they uh, want to see to what more skill based curriculum. Uh, in this particular issue, our government uh, emphasize uh, the increased number of vocational training and uh, practical skill. This is the last, the last one. And then a um, uh, little bit uh, but hot issue, uh, little uh, about the political influence that's uh, maybe uh, in terms of political, it can lead to the manipulation of the curriculum to promote certain ideologies or agenda. Uh, if the particular, uh, particular uh, uh, party, political party, uh, they based on nationalism, so it means uh, the curriculum tends to nationalism. If the particular uh, regimes uh, tend to a uh, religious uh, party, this means the education tends to religious uh, education curriculum. In its mean, in Indonesia, the role of political issue and curriculum reform is complex and multifaceted. But uh, more important from those all of the issue is the need of the students. What is the need of the student in this era? Not rather than political interest. This is just my, 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 <coughs> my conclusion about the political issue. And then we move to the next one, uh, cult culture issue uh, in educational reform. <coughs> you know, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, that we have so many cultures, so many ethnic, so many languages, so many religions, so many as uh, many things. It means culture is a significant role in educational reform because the, this country <coughs> or Indonesia is home of diverse range of ethnic group, and <coughs> as a result. Educational system has long recognized the importance of how to promote cultural awareness and understand, understanding among the students. This is the really important because uh, this is the hot issue. If we uh, tend to uh, uh, contradict about the some kind of uh, culture, this particular culture into the another culture or another ethnic, it will be. Uh, a hot issue. Uh, so it means uh, we have to or should be focused to promote cultural awareness and understanding. It means in culture, sorry, sorry, in the educational reform, we have to consider about the culture. OK. 
Okay, so uh, the culture also teach in the curriculum. For example, we have a country history. We have a local traditions. We have value and etc. This is, uh, we have a particular subject in the curriculum. And we also in educational system recognize local knowledge in practice. And the importance of preserving and promoting the knowledge. And of course, we would like to integrate all the things into the curriculum. Because this is the big country and then uh, so many things that we have to consider. The same one, in terms of culture, um, you know that uh, Indonesia is a, a specific calendar. Uh, for example, uh, this calendar, school calendar influenced by the culture. For example, this one, uh, February 18th Saturday, Isra Mi'raj of Prophet Muhammad. This is the day of, of the school. It means the culture influence the school calendar and then uh, chinese new year and holiday silence uh, just uh, two days ago uh, march 2020 we have a, a silence day and uh, also just uh, yesterday we have a kind of fasting day maybe also you know a fasting day fasting holy month of a muslim country so all the things we have to consider in the uh, school calendar. Okay, so this is the, the, the last topic uh, for my talk. The impact of the reform on teacher professional development or TPD. You know that a curriculum change or curriculum reform cannot be implemented without change in the teacher themselves. So it means we have to consider about the teacher also. So in this way, uh, our governments uh, 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 rehearse or launch uh, the names of sekolah penggerak. Sekolah penggerak in English, we call it driving school. Driving school is a, a pioneering school because we, we have uh, so many schools, right? So many schools all over all, all Indonesia. Uh, we cannot do uh, the new curriculum uh, constantly. We can do it gradually. By what? By uh, driving school. We choose some best school and we, we, we train, the government train, uh, the teacher in this particular school, and from this particular school, they share to other school. So this is driving school. Okay, so in the Korean curriculum Merdeka, uh, um, of course, this is more, uh, more competency based, but in this one, we also have to emphasize the importance of teacher professional development. And then uh, uh, our governments uh, emphasize providing teachers with the necessary training and resources. The government uh, provides so many training to, uh, to handle or to deal with this issue. For example, training workshops, online courses, peer coaching, and etc. This is the program for Ministry of Education. But in the local area, in the local area, uh, the community of the teachers in the local area, they can also uh, help some uh, workshops individually without, uh, without a company by the government. And for example, this one, uh, just last year and then this this year we have uh, we got funding uh, from the uh, from the uni uh, from the government ministry of education especially for my funding we do kind of workshops online workshop uh, uh, we call it a stem decoder workshops and also in this one 
we uh, include uh, some uh, new issue in the education, uh, particularly about the curriculum merdeka or the newest curriculum. And the last one, attitude issue in education reform. I will, will do it uh, firstly. Uh, of course, the new curriculum emphasizes the importance of developing positive attitudes. This is the highest purpose of education, positive attitudes. For example, uh, in the new curriculum, we have in more, more to focus on inquiry-based learning and scientific reasoning. With this, this, this focus, with inquiry-based learning and scientific reasoning, uh, we can cultivate a positive attitude toward the subject. And the next one, in the curriculum Merdeka, that emphasizes integration of in technology, of course, in this way, we can help a student to develop the skill and confidence. And the next one, of course, positive attitude toward science and technology. The next one, uh, the next uh, example, student-centered learning in the new curriculum. Uh, it will help the student to cultivate a sense of ownership and engagement because uh, they feel uh, uh, they feel uh, has opportunity to select the learning. It means they has sense of ownership and engagement. So this is. Uh, some positive attitudes of educational reform. Muchas gracias. Terima kasih. Okay, Beppo. Yeah. Thank you so much for your lecture. It was really interesting for us. And um, ah, perdí mi sorry. Sorry. Ah, ahí volví. Um, ¿Les parece si preparamos las preguntas? Mm -hmm. El profesor Jair también nos va a colaborar, por favor, tra haciendo la, la traducción, se las podemos entregar a él. Eh, para que eh, comente. Se la podemos pasar a él para que. Befo, uh, we have uh, some questions for you. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, we, I, I have two questions, and after that, um, uh, we will uh, ask you uh, about other subjects. Um, <clears throat> My, my questions are, um, are there any guidelines to develop doctoral education in, um, in the um, newest uh, curriculum reform? Uh, for example, to link um, academy, academy and industry. Um, I'm thinking about apply doctoral, doctoral program. So, um, are there any specific guidelines to develop doctoral education? And the other one is, um, in your opinion, uh, the um, global competence proposed by OECD is important to uh, promote promoting uh, cultural awareness and diversity in Indonesia? Um, mis preguntas son si es que existen eh, orientaciones específicas para desarrollar la educación doctoral en, en Indonesia, por ejemplo, para conectar academia e industria. Y la otra es la, la importancia que tendría la, la definición de competencia global de la OSD eh, en el marco de, de, promoción, de la promoción de eh, diversidad cultural y de conciencia cultural que Befo nos, nos presentaba. Okay, also, uh, thank you uh, for your questions. Uh, yes? Okay, yeah, I, I will try to uh, deal with your questions. So I will back to my uh, presentation slides. Wait a minute. Mm. 
Okay, so uh, in terms of your first questions, uh, guideline to develop doctor, doctoral education, uh, we have a, a kind of a framework how to develop a particular uh, level of education. For example, in bachelor degree, what should be uh, have by the student after this uh, graduate from this 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 particular uh, uh, grade, and also for doctoral degree for this one, uh, what uh, what the student. Uh, process after graduate from this one. So uh, this is our general framework to develop uh, any kind of uh, level of education, including doctoral degree. For, say, for example, in doctoral degree, uh, in the doctoral degree, in the level nine, uh, the, the, the top level of doctoral degree, they, uh, as I remember, uh, uh, number nine is uh, they should be, can develop uh, uh, the knowledge technology and science and can be benefit to others so uh, this is the, the framework uh, it means uh, in education in the uh, in the uh, doctoral degree we uh, we try to uh, uh, we try to uh, train yeah. the student how uh, get involved in the development of the knowledge how to get uh, involved the development of the science and technology. And also uh, in this framework, uh, number nine uh, for doctoral degree, the student should be, uh, they should be uh, lead uh, 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 research solely. I mean, they can be a uh, main, main person in the research or a study. So it's been uh, in the program of doctoral degree, uh we give a uh, much opportunity to the students uh, of, of to the doctoral degree to lead their research by themselves the supervision may be just only uh, maybe 10 percent uh, 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 the influence to the, their research but they should be have a uh, more than 80 percent of the uh, 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 the rule in the research because uh, in this uh, framework, in the doctoral program, uh, after they graduate, they should uh, uh, lead the, the the research by themselves. This uh, uh, the example, and then the second question uh, regarding uh, uh, global competitiveness and uh, from the OECD. Of course, uh, uh, this uh, OECD framework uh, that they, they mentioned about global competitiveness uh, uh, in our uh in our uh, educational new educational system particularly uh, it will be cultivate the awareness of the of the uh, uh, con con uh sorry of the competitiveness and then it will be to cultivate the awareness of the culture uh, as i mentioned before that uh, uh new subjects uh, are come are are uh, are uh, uh launch by new governments, I, I mean by I mean I mean by new ministry to to deal with the global competitiveness, including a uh, new approach, for example, STEM education, because in by doing a STEM education, uh, students can hence uh, uh, just like uh, critical thinking, uh, creative thinking, and etc. to uh, face the global competitiveness. Okay. Maybe it's all about just uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, Bepo. Um, tenemos una pregunta en el, en el chat también. Eh, y Patricia, eh, que nos está acompañando. Eh, hay alguien de la sí. Le damos la palabra a Patricia Perfecto. mientras reunimos las preguntas. Ah. Patricia. Okay. Good morning. Morning for everyone. Morning, eh, Patricia. My name is Patricia Velandia. I am a, a PhD student from the Universidad de Cartagena. So thank you, firstly, because it was a great presentation. I think that is... Very is it important. Cartagena also from Colombia? No, no, no. Cartagena? Uh, we... Yes. It's inside, we... yes. Oh, okay, okay. 
Yes, so we're so really thankful because these kind of conferences are very important for us as teachers, um, well, students too. Patricia, disculpen, ¿podrías encender tu cámara para... Ah, yes, so sorry. Wait a little bit. Okay. Hola, Now you can see. Yes, we can see you. Thank you very much. So first of all, thank you because it was a great and very interesting um, speech about you. I have a question about specifically foreign languages. How it's the, 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 well, the goal and the procedure there because you know, here in Colombia, it's so really difficult to teach uh, English for our students. Just keeping in mind that it is not, um, it is not a second language, it's a foreign language. So how in your, uh, in your uh, education, in your country, how is the the manage of these things? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Patricia. Um, very nice uh, questions. Uh, I think we have the same uh, problems. I mean, uh, because uh, English uh, particularly is a, a kind of a foreign language. Uh, in Indonesia, even though uh, Indonesia language is a uh, second language for the uh, from the student because they have their own language, their own local language, and the, the Indonesian language is the second language for them. And then English is foreign language. So, uh, but uh, in terms of foreign language, for example, English, uh, uh, so, uh, I think uh, start to uh, from the junior high school, they have a subject in terms of English, junior high school, grade one to grade three, and then also senior high school, and also in the um, uh, undergraduate, we have a obligatory subject in terms of English. And uh, for particular program, for example, in micro program in biology education, we have international program that uh, uh, totally teach by English. So, uh, It, it, it also in the uh, uh, for example in the uh, uh, senior high school or junior high school it's I mean it's depend on uh, the school uh, some of school they have a regulation uh, their own regulation uh, for example they will have a particular school they they have a 50 50 or the, uh, they have two two kind of bilinguals I mean two kind of language Indonesian language and also English language but in the other school, But maybe the other school, they have full teach by English. We have a, a kind of this particular school in Indonesia. Uh, but you know that all, uh, almost of the school in Indonesia, they, have, uh, they teach by Indonesian language. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, they have a special subject in terms of English start to junior high school. Uh, however, in the, uh, in the uh, elementary school, Uh, elementary school, uh, they have uh, some kind of uh, uh, elective, not, not elective. They, 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 uh, the school just purpose uh, to have uh, English English uh, subject, but this is not the obligatory uh, subject in the uh, uh, elementary school. Yes, I think uh, this is my 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 question, uh, my, my answer, Patricia. That was clear. So similar to us. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Quite similar. Thank you. Bien, uh, okay. right. um, the last question um, yep. <laughs> uh, in the chat. Oh okay. oh, okay, I see. Uh okay. Uh Diana Soto from Diana Soto. Included, for example, in the Japanese. Reform is included in the Indonesia reform. Okay. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear clearly <laughs> because too far uh, from the this reason. Uh, yes, from the speaker. Okay, Do Dr. Soto is asking if there is any indicator in, in comparison from the Jap. Um, what it says the happiness? Any happiness indicator in the Japanese reform? included in the Indonesia reform? Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, quite a little bit a uh, uh, hard question <laughs> because uh, uh, in fact, I, I don't really uh, know about the Japanese, but uh, from the literature review uh, that I mentioned before, uh, in Japanese, they really, uh, really, uh, how to say, really, uh, 
reward, give a reward to the professional uh, of the teacher. So they have professional development of teacher and then they would like uh, to learn from the other teachers. This is the reform of, of, of the uh, curriculum reform in the Japanese. Uh, but uh, in Indonesia, we have uh, learned so much from the Japanese uh, reform. For example, uh, uh, you know the term of lesson study. Lesson study is coming from Japanese. That Japan lesson study is mean uh, one teacher observe, uh, uh, not one teacher, many teachers in the classroom, many teacher in the classroom observe one teacher, and then they will do it uh, uh, by turn, and then uh, for the next day they will do it uh, uh, by turn in, in uh, the another school. So this is the culture of Japanese and the new culture of the Japanese. I mean, uh, the the uh, how to say the, the professional culture of teacher in Japanese, and we learn so much from this. Uh, start maybe uh, to twenty thousand, and then uh, and then uh, as I remember, uh, maybe uh, ten thousand ago, we uh, adopt this kind of professional uh, uh, teaching uh, development from the Japanese uh, from their professional uh, uh, TPD. Uh, we adopt this kind of TPD. We uh, try to learn uh, from other teachers. We try to observe the other teachers uh, in their classroom. So we have a community, teacher community. And then for this week, who will be a role model as a teacher? And then other teacher will observe this teacher. And then they can reflect uh, the teaching and learning process. And then uh, the next week, uh, we also uh, have the same thing to it, uh, like this, but by turn, uh, they have different teachers. Uh, so it's mean uh, from the Japanese and Indonesian, we have uh, quite the same uh, re uh, reforms uh, because uh, in the last uh, the, this this the last one does last decades ago, uh, we tried to uh, learn from Japanese that uh, for. Uh, 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 focus on how they develop teacher professional development by lesson study. I think uh, that's uh, also uh, uh, Professor Soto. Uh, okay, and now I want to ask you a question. And uh, he, here in Colombia, well, in your country, as you presented before, there are some reforms like every six, seven, eight years, right? And here in Colombia, in the curriculum, we have also experienced some reforms. The, the, what I perceive, it is that teachers in Colombia are reluctant or they, they don't want to, to reform themselves or to follow the curriculum reform. So how do teachers there in your country follow those reforms? Are they happy to follow the reforms? Do they follow them? Or there is a, like a quite reluctancy in the old teachers or um, different generations in the teachers. And I'm going to translate the question here in, for, uh, for one second. Okay. Muy parecido a lo que tienen allí. Lo que sucede es que la reforma en nuestro país, eh, el profesor no la llevaba muy a cabo, pues por una forma como de protesta que no fue incluido dentro de esas eh, tendencias de la reforma. Okay, okay go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, profesor Soto. Um, I think we have the same, uh, quite the same uh, problem, issue in terms of the curriculum reform. That, uh, uh, I think this is not only from uh, Colombia and Indonesia, all of the all the country in the world. If there is something new, if there is something new, uh, uh, I believe uh, there are so many people a uh, little bit quite hard to follow this something new until they really understand what going happen in the new. It's also happened in the curriculum reform, just like you mentioned in Colombia. In Indonesia, of course, because we have uh, so many uh, teachers and so many school, and we have so big area, you know, maybe uh, from the uh, from central uh, central uh, central uh, city of Indonesia, uh, capital city of Indonesia, uh, going to, uh, pass through a whole of the island, we need uh, so many times, and then uh, not only we need so many time, we have to face so many difficulty. Uh, 
uh, including the reluctance, in, including the resistance of the teachers. They don't want to move to, uh, they don't want to move, they uh, don't willing to move uh, to new curriculum. And they have a goal that uh, a little bit difficult to, to adapt to new curriculum because we are in the village, we are blah, 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 blah something like that. And then they mentioned that we just uh, we just uh, uh, changed the curriculum just uh, five years ago, and then right now we have to change another curriculum. Yeah, different. Uh, is I think the same the same thing happened in Indonesia, of course. But uh, of course, uh, based on that, uh, uh, in the end, in the end, uh, Professor Soto, uh, they they were happy. They were happy uh, of the new curriculum because uh, the purpose of the curriculum is uh, to adapt to a new era. After they understand uh, the content of the curriculum, after they understand the purpose of the curriculum, they will be happy to do it. I think it's enough. Uh, Marcel Soto. Uh, Natalia, what do you think? Sorry, Buenos días, ¿se escucha? Sí, no la vemos. Sí, es, es, voy, voy manejando y no, no tengo opción de cámara. Uh, hello, everybody. So, um, I'm so glad to hear the presentation. And I have just one question. Uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't, I couldn't turn on the camera right now because I'm driving. Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> be, be careful, be careful. <laughs> So you have a nice uh, information that you show us. So I, I have just this question. The high influence of the mindset education ministry over curriculum is too clear, as is your opinion, right? So um, I would like to know what kind of strategies do you think can be applied to improve this situation? OK. OK, thank you. Uh, uh, Natalia, okay, <laughs> Dr. Natalia. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, and then also you mentioned that uh, Dex, uh, that uh, mindsets uh, really uh, have a strong uh, influence to the uh, education, right? As I mentioned before, uh, uh, some of the uh, ministry has a uniqueness of the mindset and then it will be clear how they influence the education. But uh, uh, you asked about the uh, expertise, what the kind of expertise that they can deal to improve the, 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 the issue. So I think uh, right now, uh, uh, for example, in our, in our issue, I mean, in Indonesian context, this is the best one. I mean, the expertise is the best one because uh, our ministry right now, uh, he's, he has uh, plenty experience in outside country. He has plenty, uh, he is uh, still young. And also, uh, how to say, he, he has uh, many experience to do uh, regarding uh, technological based curriculum. I mean, technological based things. So this is uh, the times for this, this ministry to do a curriculum reform, to do a reform in Indonesian curriculum. And then I think, uh, this kind of uh, expertise, this kind of expertise of the uh, ministry uh, really needs by the students because uh, this competitive era, we need uh, 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 we need uh, uh, ministry, especially uh, education uh, reform, that uh, give opportunity to the student to has uh, abundance of uh, uh, opportunity to have. Uh, some kind of uh, many skill in outside, not only based on their uh, discipline or based on their department. Because uh, in this competitive era, you know, uh, there is uh, uh, there's difficult to find a job. So we have to, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the education, we have to have uh, so many experience during our uh, academic journey in a bachelor or master program. And that's why 
after they graduate from the uh, master or uh, or, or the uh, doctoral or uh, undergraduate program, they already have uh, many skills, and it's depend on what kind of opportunity jobs they can get the job based on this opportunity. So, uh, in conclusions. Uh, I think this is the time for uh, our ministry to do a curriculum report just like his expertise as international businessman. Thank you so much. So in that in that way, do you think that you are improving, for example, the international curriculum as for your students also? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, in terms of the international businessman, he is a... Uh, 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 really promotes interest internationalization. For example, uh, uh, many of university right now, uh, including University of Chamber, uh, we have to have an international class, and we have also uh, uh, international accreditation because uh, the government uh, really promotes to, to do internationalization for all of the institutions institutional level. All right. So thank you for the information and have a good night there. Yes. That's uh, there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalia. Uh, so, sorry, Hossa, uh, I cannot hear uh, clearly your voice. Befo, uh, we have the last two questions. Mm. La pregunta, son dos preguntas. La primera es si el sistema de educación en Indonesia utiliza los sistemas de información geográfica como una herramienta para la proyección de sus transformaciones en el sistema de educación. Y la segunda es si las neurociencias están teniendo incidencia en los diseños curriculares para una futura transformación de los currículos. Uh, Professor Befo, uh, Mauricio has two questions. Uh, the first question has to do if Indonesia use the geographical information system to implement or change the curriculum. And the second question has to do if or how the neuroscience influenced uh, the, the curriculum in Indonesia. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for the uh, nice questions. Uh, the first one, uh, geographical uh, uh, influence to the reforms. Of course, uh, we uh, consider everything, including uh, geographical uh, condition of Indonesia. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in the beginning, I mean, uh, in the last, uh, in the last previous one uh, of the reforms. Uh, uh, the, the the curriculum means uh, uh names is uh institutional based curriculum it means they consider about a, a uniqueness of every culture every school and every district or every island so uh they really uh tend to uh, consider about the geographical uh, curriculum and uh, for the i think the uh, right now um the geographical uh, condition also uh, being considered by the our governments uh, including uh, how uh, how they uh, think about the uh, internet connection because the technology the technology uh, based and in, uh, internet uh, is a, a hot issue in indonesia and then uh, uh, because Indonesia is a so big country and then some particular area is cannot reach the, the, the uh, internet connection. So uh, they, uh, 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 the government has some like uh, some, some kind of initiative to do uh, uh, online uh, and also uh, uh, offline based uh, learning. And then uh, the last curriculum, and uh, we mentioned that, uh, we have some kind of uh, adaptive curriculum that it's uh, quite flexible curriculum depends on the area depends on the the depends on the 
uh, how to how to say depends on the 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 condition of the island. And the last curriculum just just launched uh, last year. I mean, curriculum Merdeka. Uh, this is more freedoms to uh, the teacher to select what kind of the uh, lessons, what kind of uh, subject matter, what kind of the uh, approach that can suitable for this particular uh, area. So it means uh, the geographical condition is being considered by the governments. And the second one, uh, neuroscience, uh, I think uh, uh, the government not really much uh, talk about neuroscience um, or, or maybe I have a limit, a limit uh, knowledge about uh, neuroscience. I mean, uh, uh, I never heard about uh, how governments uh, consider about neuroscience but i know what is neuroscience but i mean uh, the, my government my 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 uh, ministry uh, uh, not really uh, talk much about neuroscience even though in the teacher professional development because i also teach for some uh, some uh, department in the profession it means profession to be a teacher uh, after graduate to be a teacher they have to get uh, two 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 semester uh additional semester to be a teacher in this this era uh, in this uh, particular semester i uh, also teach and then in this uh, this uh, this content we also teach teach about some approach or some model and some theory in education including neuroscience it's been uh, in fact in fact uh, our government uh, because uh, the the material for the teaching for the profession uh, provided by government and then one of the topic in the subject in the one of the topic of the uh, material or the content is about neuroscience it means our government also thinks about how neuroscience uh, influence uh, the teacher professional development okay, well, thank you Oh, oh, sorry, just, okay. Thank you so much for your lecture and your useful description about na uh, Indonesian national education system. And uh, muchas gracias para todos ustedes, para profesor Yair, muchas gracias. Y también uh, muchas gracias a quienes nos acompañaron. Um, good night and greetings from Tunja. Good evening. Greetings from Indonesia, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.